Good morning, everybody. Filming this on a Saturday. We're on our way home, and I'm super excited about that. Oh, it's about time. We've been gone probably, I think it's been two or more weeks. It's been the longest trip I've been on in quite a while. But, uh, a lot of fun. Me and Chevy have had a lot of fun, right, Chevy? It, it was all right, yeah, lots of fun. I, I saw a lot of things, a lot of people. But we had a lot of fun, right, Chevy? Hey, Chevy? But it's time to go home. I miss my mom. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Stare at the window. Mom? Mom? Have you seen mom? It's a beautiful day. We're just getting going in North Bay, Ontario here. And I think it's going to be a good day. I got that, that feeling right in here. Just a strict Josh, it's gonna be a good day. You ever get that feeling? You ever get that feeling? No, just me? I need to wake up though and uh oh. figure out what's going on. Maybe I should fuel here? No, I'm gonna fuel in Kappa's casing at Flying J so I get my points. The only thing is fueling at Kappa's casing up north on Flying J. The only thing about that is that uh Fuel's really expensive up there. Pooper scoopers. I guess we don't have a choice because we're gonna have to fuel somewhere. And even if I fuel here, I'm gonna have to fuel somewhere up there, so. Anyways, let's go get our coffee. Let's walk this guy and let's get going. Oh, oh fresh air. Oh, that feels good. Okay. Good morning. Nobody? All by myself? This is the load here. All nicely tarped. It's about 60, just under 65,000 pounds of steel under these tarps. So we're sitting pretty much at our max weights for a triaxle trailer in Canada. We're heavy. So it's, it's, I had a very hard, difficult time yesterday getting decent fuel economy. Uh, it was practically impossible. But we'll do the best we can, get as far as we can today. And tomorrow, tomorrow's the big day, tomorrow we go home. We're only gonna be home for a reset. And then uh, Brit, Diesel, and Frank are joining us in the truck. And all of us, the whole family, we're going to Alberta. <laughs> yeah, all of us in the same truck. I'm excited about it, actually. It was my idea. She's going to be coming with us more often. And I know I announced it yesterday already, but I'm excited. Britt's actually studying to get her commercial license so she can come drive as well. We'll be driving like super single. She won't be driving like team. I don't want to... Like I said yesterday, I don't want to be awake while she's driving and then she's awake while I'm driving. Or I mean, she's sleeping while I'm driving. I said that wrong, I'm still tired. You know, but we never see each other because one's always sleeping, one's always driving. We're not going to do that. We'll probably drive super single. We'll, we'll split the shifts just enough so that we still stop for night, but we get a little bit further than I could on my own. And we also never run out of hours because we sort of split the hours, right? And we can just keep going, 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 making money, making money. We got a an expensive roof to put on our house this summer and uh well, it'll set us back a little bit but we'll we'll get it done uh, we're adjusting everything in our lives right now so that we can get it done but uh, we just got our quote and <laughs> the new roof is going to cost twenty thousand dollars yeah that includes everything though that includes ripping the old roof off hauling it away uh, the new roof is metal, comes with a five-year warranty, five-year guarantee. Uh, we know the guys who are doing it, so we know they're going to do a good job. And they know we're going to call them if they don't. <laughs> They'll do a good job. You know my cousin, Will? Uh, he's been in the video a couple times. Uh, Will, he used to work for them. Yeah, he drives truck right now. He's driving a tanker. But uh, just last year, yeah, just last year, he was still working for them. And uh, they're the best around. So... Looking forward to getting that done, but we are going to have to work our royal butts off this summer. But we're going to work hard, and we're going to achieve our goal. Everything else is on hold right now. 
That's life. You gotta work, you gotta work, and then you gotta go home and sleep, and then you gotta go back to work. And off we go on another day. Oh boy, with this heavy load on there, these those little uh, ribs and those little bumps really, you really feel them. <laughs> Usually when you have a really heavy load, the ride gets smoother. Depending on how the weight is distributed. I have more weight on my trailer than I do on my truck because I have a triaxle on the trailer and only a tandem on the truck. So obviously there's more weight back there, which means that I'm pulling the weight and not carrying the weight. And that makes for a very bumpy ride. I just wanna get through Northern Ontario already, you know? Just thinking about home. My average trip, like before I got married, before I even met Britt, like my average trip was two and a half, three and a half weeks. And now my average trip for the last like two years has been about a week. And plus I was local or regional there for a while. You get used to that extra hometown pretty quickly. But, hey, duty calls, you gotta pull up your pants and get the job done. Our roof isn't gonna replace itself. And that's our goal for this summer. That's all we're thinking about is that roof. So we're putting everything else on hold. And hopefully, crossing our fingers, knocking on wood, hopefully nothing else goes wrong. But this is trucking. You gotta remember that, this is trucking. Something always goes wrong. Let's hope not this time. We took Highway 11 because there's less hills. I'm so heavy that climbing any type of hill, even just small ones, slow me down a great deal and cost me a lot of fuel. So I figure we'll go the, the more flat route. Take the 11, that doesn't mean it's completely flat. There's still these little hills here. I don't know if the camera even picks them up. Even these hills here are just slowing me right down. So I'm that guy on the road right now, and I apologize to anyone who is stuck behind me. I am gonna be a pain in your butt. I'm sorry. It's gonna be a slow two days getting through Northern Ontario over these hills. Time for a pit stop. Gotta check the load, check the truck, check the tires. I don't know if it's time for a new coffee yet, but I should probably wait a little while. It's gonna be a long day yet. Find some level ground here and check our oil. Make sure the truck is still happy. Pull in right here, I'll walk Chevy. All right, Chevy, you ready? It's break time. Of course, I'm parking right in this water here. Oh well, this ground here seems pretty level. So I wanna be on level ground to check my oil. Oh, mark us down in here that we are doing a load check and tire check. The powers that be want to see on your record that you stop to check everything, make sure it's safe. So that, uh, you know, they're trying to prevent, you know, random tires from flying off the truck and killing people on the side of the road and hitting oncoming traffic. And they really don't like it when your load falls off and hurts someone. So you're supposed to check your, check your load. I believe it's every two hours. I try to do it a little less than that but at least maximum two hours i'll go before i'll stop pull over check all my tires make sure that they're all still inflated uh make sure that there's no damage on them or anything sticking into them like a screw or a nail or something uh i'll check my load make sure all my straps are tight make sure my tarps are still on correctly that there's no rips and if there is rips you know you got to undo it go underneath there and uh put some rug or protector underneath there so that it doesn't rip further try to prevent the rips in the first place, but what else do we check? Uh, check my oil, make sure my truck's lifeblood is still doing well. You wanna check your oil as often as possible because you never know when you're gonna spring a leak. I learned this lesson in the last month or so. You never know when something's gonna go wrong in there, right? And suddenly you got a little bit of oil coming out the blow by that you, because of a clogged up oil separator. 
that might be my my issue and so far the truck's been doing really good but uh, I don't want to come into that position again you always want to make sure you have the right oil with you in the truck at least two gallons of it I'd say four if you have the space but at least two gallons of the oil that's that's for your truck like you don't want to just put any oil in there make sure that it's the right oil and check that check your fuel filter make sure that the fuel filter isn't all plugged up that you want to check mostly on the really cold days in winter time but anyway i have a break to enjoy so i gotta let you guys go in Ontario here. Look at this guy just giving her. Look at him go. Look at him go. <laughs> right in the middle of the lane here. You got a whole shoulder there, buddy. Try to use a the shoulder. There you go. Your wheels aren't very straight either. Give her, bud. Go, go, go. Those horses are amazing. Not spooked by anything. You know, what a simple way of life. I didn't even know we had Amish people up here. Oh, and we got some action up ahead too. What's going on up here? I don't know if they're pulling over all traffic here or if the road's blocked. They got a cop on both sides of the road here. Well, it looks like traffic can just go by, but I have to slow right down. Oh, because this truck broke down right in the lane. And they're making sure we don't all hit each other. Okay, I see what's going on here. You got a cop off to the left uh, directing traffic through here so that everyone gets around this guy who broke down safely. for him to wave me through this way. Okay, he's telling me to come. That's uh, a unfortunate spot to break down. It's nice that the police came out to make sure everyone gets around him safely though. Good old Kappa's casing. The crown of the 11. I don't know if it's called that, that's just what I made up. It's right at the top of Highway 11. It's sort of uh, halfway between Toronto and home, almost, pretty close. Hearst is a little closer, but this is where we can stop and grab some fuel. Take another break, stretch our legs, let the truck rest a little bit because she's pulling a lot of weight. 
doing pretty good though. Oil level staying, staying good still. Well, I mean, we'll check it here, but so far all day it's been holding. Really good news. Definitely gonna grab a coffee. And uh, we have seven hours and 14 minutes available to us to drive today yet. I think I'm gonna park here first and go in. Or should I just grab, you know what? Let's just grab fuel right away. No messing around. Uh, this fuel island just opened up. Oh, it's all filled with water too. Oh, don't you just love springtime, eh? No bulk DEF at pumps, in store only. Except in the store, you failed to mention that in the store it costs twice as much. Thanks for that. It's not even winter anymore. Turn your DEF pumps back on. Come on. Kappas Casing Ontario Flying J has incredible Wi-Fi. Just like Hope British Columbia. I pulled in there, I just hooked into the internet when I pulled in, started uploading a video. I had two uploading actually. I fueled up, I went around, I parked, I went inside, I grabbed a coffee, I came back to my truck. The first vlog completely uploaded. The second vlog half uploaded in like 20 minutes. Remember we were just talking about this the other day at the Black River Falls Flying J? How at that Flying J I was parked right close to the building, right in front of their antenna, and I each video took like over four hours to upload and it was about the same file size. And the thing that upsets me is that it's the same price to pay for their premium Wi-Fi in Black River Falls and locations like that as it is at other locations like this where the, where the Wi-Fi is like speedy speedy. Like 20 minutes as opposed to four hours for the same file to upload. And maybe people who don't know a lot about the internet and stuff don't realize that, but you're getting gypped at some Flying J locations. They'll charge you for premium Wi-Fi, the same price everywhere, but it varies greatly from, from location to location. So if the people over there at the Flying J headquarters are still watching my videos, if you, if you guys are there, someone important gets a hold of this message. You guys might want to look into your consistency for your premium Wi-Fi at all your locations. I know you're a massive company, there's a lot to keep up with. Your Wi-Fi at the new uh, Medicine Hat Alberta location in Canada, your, your Wi-Fi there still doesn't work and it's been, how long since it's opened? Like almost six months? And it doesn't even work at all. The Wi-Fi doesn't even, you can't even hook into it. It's there, but it doesn't work. Every time I go past, I check, six months. And then I come to these awesome locations at Campus Casing and Hope BC. Incredible internet. But then I go to other locations and other places and you know, Winnipeg is another one. Winnipeg or Headingley, Manitoba, another one where they charge you for the premium Wi-Fi but they give you the garbage Wi-Fi. It's not consistent, but the prices are. Doesn't matter if you're paying for premium Wi-Fi, sometimes you're gonna get garbage Wi-Fi. I don't like that. I rely on Wi-Fi quite a bit. Oh, I'm arriving at my waypoint. So I have 1,309 kilometers to go till I'm home. I'm not gonna get home today. Right now I have seven hours and seven minutes left to me to drive. So I'll get halfway. Halfway there. I want to get home tomorrow during the day sometime because we got to get all my laundry done, got to get this truck cleaned out, uh, we got to detail the interior myself so that uh, it's a little cleaner for when Britt comes in here, then we got to get all of our stuff in here and organized so that she can jump in with me uh, probably Monday, Monday evening or Tuesday morning whenever we decide to leave. So with Britt getting her class one license or her CDL, uh, she's in the process right now of getting her for learners. Kilometers on 11. So what that means is she, she had to go for her physical. She passed her physical. Now she's got to go for her written test, which will give her her learners. And then she's going to go through our training program. And I'm going to be her trainer. At least that's 
what I understood. The reason I'm talking about this now is that hopefully, well, if we leave on Tuesday, we got to stop in by the office and go and have a chat with them. We want to work out how we're going to get this done. Uh, whether or not I train her myself or if we send her through a, a training school, we'll see. Because if you send her to a training school, then you got to pay for the instructors, pay for the trucks and the fuel to, to learn and practice on. You got to pay for the class, right? Whereas if, if I can run the class, she doesn't have to pay me. I'll do it for free. She's my wife and uh, I'm a good husband. I'm not going to charge her. <laughs> Then I can train her with my, how many, I got my license in 2006. Uh, 16, 17, 19, 13 years experience. But we gotta follow a set curriculum, that's the thing. So we gotta go in and discuss what the best option is, how we're gonna get this done. And we wanna get Brit behind the wheel as soon as possible. And then once that happens, uh, well, things will change a lot. Like we'll be driving super single together, which means not team, but we'll both be able to drive. Britt and I would really like a career that we can do together, spend time together. And I already love what I do and she likes it too. Her dad was a truck driver as well. I come from a family of truckers, so does she. And so it only seems natural for her to uh, decide to do that. And we can spend our time together and uh, you know she doesn't want to just be a ride along that's the thing she doesn't want to come and just ride along in the truck with me all the time she wants to contribute she wants to be a part of it she wants to drive and she wants to do it together not just me doing everything and her just you know tagging along that, that's not the kind of person she is she's not like that one of the things I love about her she has to contribute she she wants to be involved all the time in everything and I, I love that you know I learn a lot from her and uh, it's one of the things I admire about her I'll stop gushing, and uh, I'm very excited, nonetheless, as you can tell. We'll see what happens. bridge here now and they added these like super bright blue LED lights at the bottom here and I don't know why because my eyes are kind of tired right now from driving all day and those are really bright I and mean, the camera doesn't do it justice but those are blinding they hurt my eyes why do you need such bright blue lights shining at traffic like that I just don't like this whole bridge <laughs> I mean, it looks nice, yeah, but ever since it buckled in the first winter, I haven't really trusted it. Now I don't understand why they put blinding blue lights on there like that. Like, those of you who have driven past here at night, like, if your eyes aren't tired, maybe it won't bother you, but, you know, it's sort of like the same way that emergency police lights, they hurt your eyes, and you can't really see where you're going when the police have someone pulled over at night. They're supposed to be, you know, creating a safe zone with their LED lights, but really all they're doing is blinding all the traffic. And this turned out to be quite a long vlog, but there's a lot of footage in there I really wanted to include. That, uh, that sunset we were driving into there at the end was just amazing. The camera didn't do it justice, but I wanted to include that. Uh, there was the drone footage. I, I was able to throw the drone up in the air again. Uh, I was warming up. I, was, I wasn't able to do it most of winter just because it's too cold and I don't want to risk uh, risk that investment. It's not supposed to be flown when it's that cold, but uh, that was a lot of fun. 
And we made it pretty far. We made it all the way uh, to the Flying J near Thunder Bay. And uh, maybe I'll talk to you about it a little bit tomorrow yet, but we're going to be sitting here because the government thinks that I need a 24-hour break because I've been working too long. I've been working 14 consecutive days straight, and they say that I cannot work a 15th. Nope, it doesn't matter that I feel perfectly fine and able, had a great sleep, and I'm good to go. Nope, government says, it doesn't matter that I'm a day away from home. I need to shut her down for a 24-hour period. So instead of spending this break at home with my wife, I get to spend it here in the truck. We'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow, though. I'm not too happy about it, but... Thanks for watching today's. If you did like it, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. It's crazy. I've been working towards it for quite a while. Thank you all for being with me all this time, for sharing it with your friends. Because, you know, if you like it, chances are you probably have some friends that might like it too. Let them know about us. Share the videos wherever you like them. Just route them back to my YouTube channel and tell them to subscribe to Trucker Josh. Other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow.